In a League of Their Own podcast is brought to you by Smooth My Balls. Are you sick of snagging your nuts or cutting yourself with a generic Bic razor or generic clipper? Well, now you don't have to worry. Smooth My Balls offers a five-star below-the-belt care for men, starting with the Turf Chopper 3.0, the next-level razor that provides a very smooth and clean finish with no cuts on your sack. And coming in for the closer, you got the Pube Muncher 1.0, a compact mini vac that cleans up the job with no hair left behind. Head over to smoothmyballs.com today and use code LEAGUE at checkout for 15% off your top of the line men's grooming kit. Again, that's LEAGUE, L E A G U E, for 15% off. Smooth my balls, shave like a pro. Rep Sports. Rep Sports is a leading supplement and nutrition company that provides everything from pre-workout and protein to recovery supplements. If you're looking for a healthy pick-me-up, Rep also offers Raise Energy, a zero sugar drink that helps with workout with workout and recovery uh, mental focus as well. Head over to repsports.com today and use code LEAGUE for 15% off your order. That's L-E-A-G-U-E for 15% off. Golf kicks. Tired of wearing the same old pair of boring golf shoes? Not the most comfortable? Now you don't have to worry. Customize all types of shoes from Crocs to flip flops, sneakers to boat shoes, and wear them in style while you rip it up on the course. Head over to golfkicks.com and use code OWN20 at checkout to get a 20% discount on your order. That's O W N 20. Screw your shoes. Dreamer loot. Want to rep the best up and coming sports podcast? Of course, you do. Head over to streamerloot.co today and check out our first line of, of merch. We have t shirts, sweatshirts, mugs, and stickers. Again, that is streamerloot.co to check out our merch. Hey, everybody, it is Wednesday, June 9th, 2021. The New York Islanders and Tampa Bay Lightning are set to face in the Eastern Conference Finals. And today we celebrate our 50th episode. There goes that man, Jocha. <laughs> oh my God, did you see that? <laughs> America's team? Yeah, right. Oh, baby, it's a big day in sports. There's nothing like battling it out with your teammates all season long to go win a championship. Green Bay's got it this year. Huge move for him. I think it's going to be a game changer. We have a lot to talk about this busy week in the sports world. Welcome to the In a League of Their Own podcast. All right, again, everybody, welcome to the show. Again, as I'd mentioned, it is the big 5 0 for us um, for our, again, our 50th episode, kind of our first milestone to hit here. Um, yeah, it's exciting, kind of looking back to, I guess, our first couple episodes. Actually, yesterday and today, I was looking back at some of our kind of our first episodes, and it's, it's kind of funny looking back at just how kind of clunky things were and like I'm I mean obviously the passion was there from day one just with both of us in the sports world but it's definitely uh fun to see how far we've come in 50 short episodes yeah I haven't gotten the chance to go take a look back but I definitely do remember just off the the planning and all the conversations we've had uh about it so definitely Glad to see we've made that first step and we've hit 50 and let's keep rolling. Yeah. So jumping right into things here per usual NFL, a couple things to highlight. Um, um, I guess uh, two points I'll throw out there kind of revolving around the Denver Broncos. The first being Peyton Manning is going to be the 35th member of the Broncos ring of fame. Um, it honestly surprises me that he's not already on that ring. Uh, already on it um but i'm sure there's like stipulations and certain criteria you have to meet before you can get up there you have to be so many years out of the league or be in um that team's hall of fame or the the overall hall of fame i don't know how exactly how it works but peyton's been out of the league for what six seven years now roughly so um yeah good to see him on there and then the other broncos related news is that deshaun watson um uh, now that things are quiet, kind of quieted down for his whole um, case going on that he's he's had down in Houston, he came out and said that he actually wants to become a Denver Bronco himself. Um, do you think that would be potentially a good move for Denver? I know they went on and got Teddy Bridgewater. They still got 
um uh drew luck there um so um i don't know it, it's it was kind of weird to see that hit. he picked that spot, especially that that being kind of a spot that Aaron Rodgers would potentially go to. So it kind of seems like Denver's kind of becoming the fo- focal point of some of these free agents. Yeah, I also feel like <clears throat> God, I got some caught in my throat. Uh, I feel like the environment also has a big um, thing to do with playing there. Like I know. Texas, there's no state tax, state income tax. So, yeah, you can make a little bit more money there, but also the atmosphere. I feel like Denver's kind of a chill, relaxed type of area where Texas is all about football, like all about football no matter what. So, I don't know. I feel like for people who kind of just want to kind of go into the back burner and stay out of, like, mainstream media, Denver's a great place to be. Um, Middle of the country. Avalanche and the other team are the Denver Nuggets are in the playoffs, so no news. Yeah, um, yeah, it kind of. I'm sure Denver might be one of those teams that has the uh, least amount of travel in the league, as far as what, like, if they go East Coast or West Coast. Like, if a West Coast team is playing in East Coast or vice versa, they're traveling thousands of miles. Where, um. But also you're at that elevation, so that has that definitely has a play, especially, um, I mean, at the Denver Stadium where you're outside. I mean, the indoor arenas have air pumped into them, so you probably don't notice the elevation as much in, uh, for, like, the Avalanche or the Nuggets. But at Mile High Stadium, I know you see guys with the oxygen on, on the sidelines and stuff like that, so that's definitely something to get used to. So I guess that's the one downfall of being in Denver. But also, like you said, it's kind of – it's centralized. It's less – about one specific sport it's more of a chill state and i mean just for the broncos as a whole they they're only five or what six years well super bowl 50 so yeah six years removed from winning a super bowl and i think they're the first team to miss the playoffs five straight years or whatever since winning a super After, bowl yeah um but yeah they got a good defense too so i mean i could definitely see them bouncing back again they're in a tough division with the Chiefs, the Raiders, and the Chargers, and they kind of fall forth at the bottom of the division there. But, yeah, I mean, it'll be interesting to see what happens, um, kind of looking at after Deshaun Watson apparently sources – like, I didn't see that he came out directly and said that. It's that his sources say that he wants it was to a be former, there. It was a, his former teammate, a former teammate of his. It didn't say the name, but there was two of them. It said two former teammates, so – People who played with him and people who know him are, so I'd say, reliable sources that he wants to get out of Texas. And with everything, all the accusations that he's been accused of, too, all happening within the Texas area for the most part. Um, yeah, I feel like a relocation might be the best thing for him. Yeah, I mean, if he could get out, like, without jail time or huge fines, yeah, like, I'd it'd be smart to just get out of that whole situation in general and find a new team, despite the fact that he's also said he's been displeased with that team for uh, a couple of years now. So, well, cause Bill O'Brien, what's his name? He ran that organization. Yeah, down. basically. Yeah. When he knew he was on his last legs, he, he's like, all right, if I, if I'm going, I'm burning this place down with me. So. Yeah. Um, any NFL points? You want? I got a couple more, but uh, if there's a couple you want to throw out there. What was that? Can NFL you... points. And a cut. Oh, okay. Um, I just got two quick points here. Nothing, nothing too crazy here. One, um, Minnesota Vikings quarterback Kurt Cousin has came out in an interview, said that he has spent all offseason rewatching every one of his snaps from day one. Um, that he started in the NFL up until currently to kind of figure out what the things that he does well and what, like what he hasn't done well. Uh, he said this is the first time in his career that he's actually gone over and went back and looked as a quarterback. You got to have, you know, a fresh mindset. You can't be worried about what you did two plays go throw an interception or whatever. And I just feel like for quarterbacks, it's not common for guys to go back and like watch their growth from the start to now. And I feel like this could potentially be a big move for him. You know, maybe he figures out something that he hasn't figured out before. And he's a, he's a, 
NFL quarterback. So you never know what to expect coming out of Minnesota. You know, he's Justin Jefferson and Thielen are kind of their two saving graces, you know, and Dalvin Cook, as long as he's still there. But yeah, I mean, this could be, he has a big year this year and he could get one more big contract before, you know, it's all said and done for Kirk Cousins. So that's pretty cool. And then the last thing that I have is Jordan Love was asked if he was ready to start week one, if need be. And he said, he's definitely hundred percent ready. Um, great to see the confidence in the kid, you know, for the whole situation that he's in himself, not knowing the second Rogers comes back in the building, he ain't never seen another ball type of thing it's for him to just be going out there and working his ass off and just kind of avoiding, you know, blocking out all the noise and just doing his job. Um, a lot of the reporters who have been at OTAs and been watching some of these practices say Blake Bortles is, should be the number one quarterback coming out of camp so far, just based on throwing the ball and executing some of the plays, two minute drill. Um, yeah. So it's going to be interesting to see as long as, you know, Rogers doesn't show up, he's, he's the guy. So we, as a fan base, I feel like if, you know, Rogers decides to walk away. We got to support this guy and hope that, you know, he can stick it out and maybe get us to the playoffs or, you know, at least get a couple wins. Cause without Rogers in the past couple of years, without having a backup quarterback, we haven't been able to barely score. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, I, I think it's awesome for him being as confident as he is, whether or not he's as good as he sh- people i feel like a lot of people too are expecting him to be like aaron Rodgers. like how many people are like aaron Rodgers? not zero like yeah there's no there's no other really maybe ish yeah but Mahomes is more of a cannon so you almost like Mahomes has that up on rogers but yeah, like, like there's no other quarterbacks that it's like coming out of the draft. It's like, who's their NFL comparison? Well, you never hear Rogers name. Justin Fields is the one that's been compared oh, yeah. to him, him and a Mahomes like mix. But I mean, nobody can do what Rogers has done. And like, look at Brett Favre beforehand, another hall of fame quarterback, one of the greatest to ever play. Like us as Packer fans, we've been so lucky having two hall of fame, legendary quarterbacks back to back. Like, you can't expect some guy who no one's really heard of of being like a superstar. He, he's not like a Trevor Lawrence. You can't expect the guy to step in there and be like Aaron Rodgers. You know what I yeah. mean? I feel like that's a little bit too high expectations, but yeah, I feel like, I feel like uh, LaFleur is a great coach and I feel like he's just, he's going to do what he can to make him feel comfortable and, you know, help the team do the best that they can. Yeah. I guess kind of going off that, do you think, say the Packers struggle early on? I know teams don't really tank too much anymore. Yeah, you have teams that end up with only a couple of wins, but that's just due to injuries, lack of coaching, a new system, this and that. Rarely do you see like teams kind of buy into the or buy into the whole, oh yeah, we're gonna tank this year for a draft pick. If the Packers start like say by well, a week eight isn't the halfway point anymore. But if by week eight they don't have more than three wins, do you think that they try to play for maybe getting themselves a better quarterback in next year's draft and try to just take 2021 as a wash, knowing that, I mean, if Love can't by week eight show some promise, like maybe he just need like they need to fix a couple things here and there. But if it's just to the point that, we fucked up. This was not a good draft pick, whether he's not who we thought he was, or he just doesn't fit into the green Bay system. Do they try to move on next year um, and try to get a top 10 draft pick and maybe try to go out and get one of the best quarterbacks? I feel like it's very, it'd be one of the most difficult things to get, to get everybody on the same page to tank. I like you're playing professional sports. You're paying for your, your job, your financial security, you kind of almost can't tank. You like, you have to play to win, no matter if you're on 15 going into the last, like you have to try to win. But yeah, like as far as like standpoint of getting draft picks and kind of like rebuilding quicker. Yeah. But also if we go from 
basically one play away from a Super Bowl, appearing in a Super Bowl, to three and 15. Just like the 49ers did. But the, right, but the, like they had injuries and all yeah. that stuff. We don't like Adams. He ain't resigning, so you might as well trade him. Try to get some draft pick. You might as, if it goes that way, you ain't gonna be able to keep anybody on, on the Packers. Yeah. So you, it's gonna be a fire sale. Mm-hmm. And and again, just like I, I, I just pulled up their schedule here, and like I said, like as far as tanking, like. It would it'd be e- like it'd be easy for them to have a tank kind of a season without making it look like it. They play teams like the Saints, the 49ers, who should be back and healthy, uh, Steelers, who were 11 0 at one point, the Chiefs, the Cardinals, the Seahawks, the Rams, the Browns, the Ravens. These are yeah, all a lot of good tough. Teams. These are all tough. Where if they can only beat really the couple teams in the division, like your, your bears, lions, Vikings, which even the Vikings will be good. Um, the only other, the two, two games that should be uh, surefire wins are the Bengals and, and uh, Washington, which even Washington's trending up as well. And I feel like green Bay always plays like shit against them. I think last time they played them, they barely squeaked out a win. It was like 20 to 15, some obscure um, score and they barely won that game. So like I said, if it gets to the point where they're kind of hitting this stretch, like by oh, what week is this? One, two, three, four, five, six. By week seven, when they play Washington, after that, they play the Cardinals, the Chiefs, the Seahawks, the Vikings. Those are the four games after that. So by week seven, if they have a losing record, they're going to like, how do you, how, you have a losing record playing teams like the Bengals and Washington and the Lions? How do you expect to go into can into Kansas City into Arizona and try to win games like that. So that's why football is football though. Any anything can happen. Yeah. But I don't know. Like I said, it's just like again with that where it like I said, you, you really see teams kind of buy into the whole tanking kind of year. Um I mean even like the the Jets, they technically screw themselves out of the first by round winning. pick by beating the Rams like week 15 or 16, whatever that was. So but obviously at the same time, think of how many players on the team had a bonus for getting a win, which is mm-hmm. so much more important to them than the team getting a number one draft. But you know what I mean? Like you, you, that's why it, you'd never get everybody on board to tank. Yeah. The, only, the only way you'd be able to make it, make it happen is to have your quarterback just want to drive, like throw picks every time fumble snaps that's the only way you could realistically do it. But at the same time, if your defense goes out and plays lights out, you kind of, you're going to get called off for like shaving points type of thing, you know, trying to lose and yeah. you won't have a job anymore. So. Yeah. But yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens again. It's kind of the last, like, I don't know, a month ago, I was like, we're, we we're still very optimistic about the Rogers return and stuff like that. And now it's getting to the point, basically it's, He hasn't reported the last two days to mandatory camp. Jordan Love is getting QB1 reps. Again, Blake Bortles looks really good. Two days ago, everybody's giving Jordan Love flack, and then today he came out and was dropping 30, 40, 60-yard bombs and looked really good and got a lot of of props from today. So he bounced back from yesterday and had a really good practice supposedly today. So, um, I mean, it'll be interesting to see. I mean – Jordan Love against a young guy, Blake Bortles. He led the Jags to AFC Championship against the Pats a couple of years back. So he's obviously been there and done that. So, I mean, the obviously the defense is going to have to step up even more than they did last year. Last year was definitely probably the best that defense has been in really five Super years. Bowl. Yeah. So... I don't know. It's going to be an interesting year. And like I said, by week seven, week eight, kind of going into that four game stint, if they have a losing record against mediocre teams, it's going to be tough for them to come out with a winning record, let alone make a playoff run. And that's the thing too, is you don't want to get stuck in that lull of pick 15 to 25, where like you didn't have a good enough season to make the playoffs, but you're not really getting the top talent out of the draft. That's not really a good lull to be in. If you're like 28 or higher, 
or lower, I should say, like 28 through 32, you at least had a good season. You made your conference championship kind of thing. And if you're in the top 10 picks, you just accepted the fact that it was a shit year and you're banking on that draft kind of getting you back on track for the following year. So, um, yeah, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see what happens. But um, And then just the last, I guess, NFL point to throw out there is NFL is seeking to have uh, more international games in Germany. Uh, they're looking for a city to partner with. Uh, right now they do have their London games. I think like three or four games a year that they have international over there. And they've been in talks with Germany to try to move some international games there as well. Um, I don't know if it'd be as early as next year, if it'd be 2024, but um, I mean, it's, I think it's definitely cool. Kind of like how the NBA goes over to China and does games over there, not games that are part of the regular season, but games like preseason games and stuff like that, just to kind of make it more. It is a real game. (laughs) What's that? I said, and we're in the NFL. It is a real game. It counts. Like all the travel, all that bullshit. Well, that's the thing too, is those London games. If you're going to do it. Yeah. And those London games, you got to be up at eight, nine o'clock in the morning. If you want to watch it kind of thing where Germany, you'd have to be up at three in the morning to watch it live. So I guess I don't know how they do that. Cause obviously they lose a lot of viewers to have games in Germany. Like, yes, you're going to have people in Europe watching it, but there's a lot more people in the U S that watch football than in Europe. Cause over there it's soccer, unless they're just like, Oh, cool. NFL's in Germany. Let's watch it. But I don't see, I don't see I don't them see gaining. Yeah. I don't see them getting enough viewers to counter for the ones, all the ones they lose unless they have like a night game, like a seven o'clock game. Cause then it'd be like, I don't know, late morning in the U S then. Yeah. You got to have a packed stadium there, whatever it is. Oh yeah. <coughs> but I don't know. Yeah. That was just the last point to throw out there for the NFL. Um, So moving over to the NBA here, then um, some kind of some previous games that happened, the 76ers, even the series yesterday, one to one as in B drops 40, um, the Hawks stole game one. So they're able to bounce back. I think they won by like 16 there. Um, The jazz survived game one over the Clippers. Um, Clippers had a couple looks right at the end of the game and the jazz defense just shut them down. It was Clippers got would take a shot, got blocked. Clippers get a rebound. Jazz blocked the shot. And that's basically what happened in the last 10 seconds. They just couldn't get a clean shot at the basket. So, um, yeah, is it, it's cool to see the Clippers kind of come back, probably pissed off that they almost lost the first round series to the Mavs, who, again, are, were a good team. But um, the Jazz are going to be a better match or a better um, test for them. But, um the Bucks and Nets game three tomorrow, Milwaukee. The Nets lead that series 2-0. Um, unfortunately, had to watch that game the other night with, with the Bucks couldn't make a free throw, couldn't make a three-pointer. Giannis is trying to pull up from three every time he's going down the court. Yes, you're down 20 plus points, but you're not a three-point shooter. So it's a turnover. You're, yeah, you're just giving the ball back to the other team. And the Nets couldn't miss. I think they're close to 60% on the night from the field. So um, it was kind of, they had two off nights. So instead of having one, one, one game or one day off and then playing the next, they had yesterday and tonight off and they play tomorrow. So hopefully Milwaukee draws up a game plan. They got to win game three. Obviously you go down to a three Oh hole. Um, LeBron's been the only one to come back from a three, one hole in the playoffs. Nobody's ever come back from a three Oh. So, and against, arguably the best team in this year's um, playoffs. You're not coming back from a 3-0 hole. So hopefully Milwaukee can figure out at home. Again, the next two games are at home. So if they can win both of those, it's a 2-2 series. And then um, it's a best of three and uh, both or two home games in Brooklyn. So we'll see what happens tomorrow night. But um, in the game that is underway tonight, um, uh, Nuggets and Suns, um, pull that one up here quick. Uh, oh, Suns are up big, 102.75 with eight left in that one. So it looks like the Suns are going to take a 2-0 Whoa. series lead in that one. Um, kind of to be expected. Again, I feel like 
the Lakers kind of got more of the Suns than they should have, and the Suns realize at this point it's going to get hard, be harder for them the deeper they go on this road to the NBA Finals. So looks like they've come out with their A game in Game One and now in Game Two against the Nuggets. Um, again, both both of the first two games were in Phoenix. Series sh- shifts over to Denver for Game Three and Four. So. Um, again, kind of the same situation to Bucks and Nets. Um, if the Nuggets are going to try to make a series out of it, they got to win game three. Um, if they drop, the Suns are moving on to the Western Finals. And Harden's going to be out again, too. So, yeah, if you're, if you're the Nets, you rest Harden until you need him. <laughs> you bring him bring... back in like game five. If, if the Milwaukee were to tie up the I'd series 2 2, I'd say six or seven. Yeah, because game yeah game six would be Milwaukee, game seven back in Brooklyn. So yeah, if it, if the series does get that far, let him rest. And I mean, they took care of business without him in game two easily. So it, it's like here. yeah. And then uh, the last NBA points, at least uh, I have to throw out there, is LeBron James announced today that he is switching his jersey number from twenty three to six next season. Um, kind of came out of left field it's weird to see that but i mean you could do whatever he wants just as, as any other player can i mean with the nfl you have a lot of guys changing their numbers but um again as a fan who spent 100 plus dollars on a lebron jersey now you got to buy yourself another one if you want to keep up with the number change but um i wonder if that's like the nfl where he's got to buy out personally all the jerseys it could be I have no idea. I mean, he's got the obviously has the money to if that is the case, but all the athletes have the money to do it. Yeah. So I don't know. It's kind of I wonder if it's kind of him switching to six is because MJ had six. So he's just going to have that as a reminder to him that that's the greatness he has to chase kind of thing. But also that's been, him. He wore it in Miami. In I Miami. Like and that's his won, practice jersey. A, yeah. He won a championship with 23 in L.A. And now he's going to win. Try to win one as number six in LA kind of like Kobe switching from eight to 24 kind of thing and winning a championship with both. Yeah. Or, but Kobe also had two hall of fame careers with each number. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> but Kobe also had Shaq. Kobe's teams are unreal. And Phil Jackson one argue probably one of the greatest coaches of all time. Yeah. Yeah. That was just kind of a brief rundown of, where we're at with the NBA playoffs up until now. Um, I don't know if you had any other things to throw in there. No, just let's go Suns. Yeah, I, I really like the Suns coming out of the West. I know you've been kind of high on their horse since a couple weeks, like before the playoffs even started kind of thing. And I like I liked them and I kind of liked the Jazz, but the Jazz, they just seem like, like the it's Suns cool. just seem like a hot, like the hot team right now out of the West. Um, I mean, obviously, out of the East, the Nets still look like the favorite team, but at the same That'd be time, a good matchup. Yeah, but at the same time, they're going to need Harden back if he can't if he can't stay healthy, or if Hart, or if uh, Kyrie or Durant go down with injury as well. On top of it, that could that's a huge blow for them. But also at the same time, with Harden out, they had like what was it the other night? Um, Kyrie and Durant in the first half had like 32 points combined against Milwaukee and everybody else had like 40. So the bench stepped up in a big way without hard in there. Blake I mean, Griffin's been unstoppable. Yeah, Blake, so Blake far. Griffin, uh, Harris, he's been really good with the three ball. Um, yeah. I don't know. That, that team is just has a lot of depth to it. Even some of the guys that come in for subs that you don't, you never really heard of all year, they're still going and getting buckets. They're getting five, 10, 15 points as needed. So, yeah, again, game three is basically going to decide that series tomorrow. Uh, if Milwaukee can come out and, and stomp the, the Nets, um, they might have a series on their hands. But if they either lose or can barely, or barely squeak out a win or they have troubles again from, from deep or from the free throw line, that's going to be over for the Bucks again. And um, a couple of weeks ago, I, I, I mentioned an article I came across with Mike Boonholzer kind of being on the chopping block where if you can't make a deep run with Milwaukee, who knows he might be out or just but some coaching changes. 
<laughs> when you got that when you got Drew Holiday, Chris Middleton, Giannis on your team, but they're not making shots. You know, it's not the game plan. They're not making the shots. Yeah, I don't know. But they, they, really, if they were they making have, shots. If they were they, making their shots, they, they just seem to be more dynamic. They just have they're they're a two faced offense. Either the three ball with Bryn Forbes also sucks that DiVincenzo is out because he hurt his foot. And uh, I think game two of the series with the Heat, and he's out the rest of the playoffs. But yeah, DiVincenzo, Forbes, and Middleton are kind of your three point shooters. And then Giannis and Brooke down in the paint. They don't really have that mid range game where they're predictable, where if they can't knock down points from outside the arc and you, Giannis can't get in the paint, they're screwed. They don't really have pull up shooters. Middleton's their best pull up shooter by far on that team, but. When you're playing a three-headed monster in Brooklyn, Middleton isn't going to do it by himself because he's not – he's good for 25 to mid-30s, but he does not kind of pop off for a 40 or 50-point game. But, again, we'll see what happens tomorrow night when we talk about that series on Friday. Either it's going to be high hopes for Milwaukee or packing bags and see you next year. So we'll break that down on Friday for you guys. But – um. I guess I'll jump over to the MLB here then for a handful of points. Uh, Pittsburgh Pirates rookie star, Brian Hayes, um, lost the team a home run yesterday after the replay confirmed that he forgot to touch first base. Um, when you hit a That's dinger. The second Pirates fuck up this season. Yeah, and the Pirates are at the bottom of the NL Central, so they have nothing to play for, but still, it's just one of those years where it's like you can't get anything to go right. Um. Next, the White Sox announced they'll be at full capacity starting June 25th. That now marks over half the league's teams announcing full capacity to this point of the season. Um, Just earlier or late last month, I think the Cubs announced it as well. So I don't know what teams haven't announced it yet, but they're past that halfway point now. And I'm sure by the end of the baseball season, come September, October, October, they'll probably be uh, full capacity all around the league. Um, the Brewers have won five straight again and a lot have won nine of their last 10. They took game one of their series with the Reds last night, five to one, and they're underway as well tonight. Oh, that one just that finished up a little bit ago. They lost that one seven to three tonight. Um, so I believe now they're tied again with the Cubs because the Cubs won today. So they're tied again in the NL Central. Um, but again, that's going to be, it's really early in the year. They can go back and forth. They could, they're like six games back at one point, like three or four weeks ago. And now they're in for, tied for first. So it's a lot of, a lot of runs in baseball. So you never know what's going to happen there, but, um, angels launched five home runs yesterday in an eight, one win over the Royals. And then giants shortstop Brandon Crawford played his franchise record, 1300th and 26th game yesterday for the Giants. So um, it's a heck of a lot of baseball games. Um, so, yeah, just giving them a shout out there. And that's all I got for baseball. Sounds good. Then I'm going to jump into hockey real quick here. Um, last night, Tampa Bay closes out the Carolina Hurricanes in a shutout fashion to move into the, the Eastern Conference Finals. Montreal Canadiens sweep the Winnipeg Jets. They punch their ticket on the west side. They will face either Colorado or Vegas, whichever team pulls out of that series. And then last night, uh, Vegas scores three straight, comes back and beats Colorado 3-2 to two in overtime. Um I think they flipped the series completely on Colorado, and I think this is all Vegas. Um, Mark andre Fleury, like I said in the beginning, he's going to have to steal the show, and he is. Um, he did let in that one soft goal at the end of the first period, the one that was across the body. I don't know why he would try to reach all the way across with his glove when he could just throw his shoulder up like that to knock the puck out. But whatever. they, He kind of laughed it off, and – Came up with big saves when they needed it, and they ended up getting the win. So they go back to Vegas for tomorrow, game six. Should be a hell of a game. Um, That is the only game going on currently as the other um, 
as Montreal is the only team waiting to, to play someone because uh, New York Islanders ended up finishing off the Boston Bruins tonight in game six in Long Island. I do think this was the last game in the old building. Um, it wasn't 100% sure if the new building was going to be ready for the latter half of the playoffs here, but I did hear a mention of this potentially could be their last game on Long Island. So they had the crowd crowd rocking. They didn't, you know, they didn't disappoint. I think it was six six two. They ended up winning uh, the last two goals of the game. They weren't even trying to score, and it was just puck, just puck luck, just putting the puck in the net, and it was kind of all over from there. They looked too good. They wore Boston down, and they're gonna have a hell of a matchup with Tampa on their hands. Is Tampa's a lot deeper and a lot faster. So it's going to be interesting to see if the style of the New York Islanders of playing slow, grinding teams down to a pulp, kind of they play very similar to the Montreal Canadiens. Um, got a hot goalie, throw the puck in the corner, and hit the guy every time that you can, grind him down, wear him down. And later in the game, one of your lines is going to get the goal because that other team is going to be tired and you guys are still going at it. So that's all I really had for hockey. Um, Stanley Cup finals, I mean, are a week and a half away, roughly. So sh- it's getting really, really interesting. I mean, I, I love watching hockey every single day because these games are so intense. But, yeah, tomorrow should be a big one if for, for those of you who have the chance to watch that. For sure. Yeah, Um that's all I had for today too. Again, we had our 50th episode today. We didn't have anything really too special planned. Again, we have the kind of back and forth with night episodes, afternoon episodes. So um, again, it's all just based on our schedule when we can get these out for you guys. Um, We'll probably, uh, we'll obviously do something at 100 because that's a bigger milestone to hit than 50 and, maybe plan something out in the future ahead of time for that one. But, but yeah, I mean, we hit 50 in only like what, three months here. So by the end of summer, we should be hitting a hundred. So um, yeah, it's uh, again, been fun to this, this point and looking forward to when we hit a hundred. Yeah, absolutely. This has been so much fun and thanks again to you guys, everyone stopping by watching and giving us support um really helps us i guess do our jobs easier i'm not like i'm not calling this a job because we love doing this but i don't even know what else to call it an activity but like you guys are the reason that we love to do what we're doing continuing to get people to get their eyes on it and yeah we just really appreciate everyone stopping by whether it's for five seconds whether you're watching the whole video it doesn't matter any little bit of you know, support and watch time viewership that you can give towards us really helps us in any way possible. Also, if you give us five stars on the Google or Apple podcast thing, you don't, you can just, and even in the comments, you can put that we made you do it. Doesn't matter. Just five star <laughs> ratings. All you need to help us jump up those charts. Uh, Cause once we get up those charts, we can kind of start spreading our wings a little bit more on uh, getting in a whole bunch of different, areas and that type of stuff so that'd be really supportive if you guys could do that also don't forget to like follow subscribe to our channels youtube twitter tiktok instagram facebook anywhere 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 and everywhere you can go to google type in in a league of their own podcast you can find us that way you can also go to like google and apple Podcasts, like i mentioned earlier spotify um anchor anywhere that's associated with them you can find us um don't forget to check out the merch love seeing people rocking the merch uh if you end up getting some post a picture tag us in it we'll definitely throw you in our story and make it known that uh people are out there rocking our merch and yeah big 50 it was a great episode and uh, i wish there was a little bit more to talk about but we're kind of in that little bit of a lull time where championships are about to be getting one here so yeah just i'm glad to be doing this and uh yeah friday should be a good one yeah. And it, once the, the uh, NBA playoffs and NHL playoffs are done, uh, as you mentioned a couple of weeks back, we will we'll start to add more segments of games and rankings and just different stuff to go into. Because, again, basically, 
the there's not gonna be anything going on in the NFL aside from mandatory camps. NBA, NHL is gonna be done. Really, the only sports to talk about are gonna be golf and baseball. So, um, again, we'll be adding in more segments. Feel free to drop in the comments on any of our socials. We make sure we read every single one of them and um, usually on top of responding within a couple hours. So um, if you guys see segments that other that like other podcasts do, you're like, oh, they, this is fun. Check it out. We'll check it out and see if there's a way that we can incorporate it, that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, we'll be turning our creative our, our creative gears over the next couple of weeks as we figure out what we're going to do with our summer. And yeah, we will see you guys on Friday for whatever the sports world has for us. Yeah, you guys have a good one, and we will see you Friday.